documentary part seven. You know, I want to say good afternoon to everybody first and foremost. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for coming on so to support. Only to most respect me in my video. So, let me start off by saying the definition of a real mother is what I'm about to say. Because what my mama been through and what I saw is totally different. Here we go. Living in a world, a crazy world, of uh, being raised by my mother was totally different from being raised by my grandma. But I feel like a figure of a mother is someone who teaches you, guides you, leads you, listens to you, holds you, loves you, supports you, walks with you, and guides you through everything you're going through, and understand and listen to you. I feel as though life is never what people think it's supposed to be. Like, the system is cruel as well, because I got living proof that the system is cruel. When my children was in foster care, yeah, their hair was not good, they had colds, they were sick, stuff was doing drugs, all kind of things was going on. And you mean to tell me, you're talking about, yeah, the system needs to take your kids out of the house and just ain't nobody in the person who's raising up themselves, which is their mother. You know, I forgive my mother, my mother for what she has done. But never till the time in my life I can say, I forgive myself for the demons of you and I'm still there. I'm not going to turn my back on you. I love you to death, do a spark like I love all my other children. My boys are so close. A Shay cried all day yesterday. I didn't want to show the video. I didn't want to put the camera in our life. It's certain things that you can't show the camera that you want to show because guess what? They judge you on that. But you being a real ass mother and being a real ass human being and showing the world the real raw shit that life is, they hate that. But they're so quick to throw up, oh, CPS coming. Or CPS this and that and the third. You don't never know what CPS got going on. CPS undercover just like anybody else is. They ain't no better than nobody else. Kids in the system getting beat. They dying. They ain't living. So you rather for you rather take kids from a mother who's willing to do whatever she can for her kids and fight for her kids and take them away from them. And 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 it's like stupid and dumb because you know I think about my mama situation. Like you see me every day. I even try to take you to lunch one time so we can talk and make this agreement on let me get that hug that I want before I die from you. Let me get that love and support for you that I didn't have. Let me know in my heart that you mean that you say you sorry, that you mean you say you sorry. That I want to hear you say that. Let me know that you love me. The baby that you carry in your womb for nine months push out 36 years later, I'm here still standing with nine of your fucking grandkids that you don't even come see. We live in one circle and you still don't come see the kids. You don't even call and say, okay, can I, can you house clean and stuff like that? My Uncle Derek will come down from Washington, D.C. and take care of me and my older sister and brother. He gave me books from Washington, D.C. of the color of my skin was that was no different than my mother when my mama was red. He inspired me to be who I am today. He's like, you know what? You is beautiful inside and out. Your mama might call your name and say things, but you was created inside of her womb. Now think about a mother. This is real life. When you carry a baby inside of your womb, and you feel that baby kick, heek up, and sometimes moan and cry because you can hear him inside of the womb. That's the best bond you can ever have with a baby that you carry nine months and still taking care of to this day. And see, these kids in the world right now is so cruel. They're not seeing that. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here. The same thing with my mama. Like, if it wasn't for her to have me, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here. It's the, it's the most beautiful gift in the world to be a mother. It's the most beautiful gift to even have children. It's the most beautiful gift to give life to somebody else that you created, that you carry in the womb, that you push out, you're looking at every day grow up. I'm watching my kids grow. I'm watching every step they take. I'm here. To, I'm here. I'm the shoulder they lean on when they need somebody. I'm here to wipe their tears away. I'm here changing their diapers. I'm here cooking and cleaning for them. I'm doing everything I possibly can for my children as a mother. And let me, let me do the raw and uncut. These people that's on the social media, they sit back watching you on what you do and how you do it. And they try to get all the things that you're going through, the demons and the devils that's going through your head, let that shit go. But it's hard to let go because of the fact you're inside of your own body. Nobody knows how you feel. That's why a lot of these kids being bullied in school because nobody knows what's going on. You have to listen to your kids. You have to guide them, lead them, show them, love them, hold them, cry with them, grow with them. Because guess what? That's what I'm doing with my kids. That's the definition of a real 
mother. That's how I see a real mother because I have never been a mother until I had Naya. But I grew with all my children. Each one of each one of my kids has a bond with me. And I love them to death. And, it, and I want to thank my Uncle Derek so much for giving me the script. As a teenage girl, I used to cry over him when he leaves to encourage me on being beautiful, bold, smart, intelligent, pretty. Your color of your skin does not matter because that same color of your skin is the skin that your mama gave you in the time you was carried in the womb for nine months and pushed out. Your skin ain't no different than hers. And he used to always tell me that to keep me from crying because I was the type of child in school. I was the quiet kid until I started being bad because all the things I was going to do with my mom because I wanted my mama. I wanted my mama. It hurt every day to be in the house with my grandma. I'm outside, y'all, so it's a fly. It hurt every day to be away from my mother. Then and gone and kill and murder, and she wanted to get all these things off her chest because she wanted to talk to my mama about how she was really feeling about her not loving us as her daughter. She was the same way. She didn't have the opportunity to go and her go to her mother, our mother, and tell her how we really feel about her calling us bitches and hoes and saying we not the color her we not the color her and we not her daughters. And now she dead, she can't tell her story. Here I am still standing. Why not let the world know? I had this write down on paper for years that I wanted to let the world know how I became who I am and how strong I am today to do the things I do because of the fact my grandma raised me to be the woman I am. If it wasn't for my grandma, I would not be sitting here right now. I would not be talking to y'all right now because she's the one put me where I need to be at. I was 19 living on my own. When I found out I was pregnant with Naya, my life changed. It changed for the better, it changed for the worse because I was trying to go to school to get my degree. When I found out I was pregnant, I contacted her dad. And I told her daddy, I said, I'm pregnant. He said, well, you got to come back home. I don't want my baby being born in the street. I still didn't let that bother me. I still focus on what I had to focus on to manage to know that I got a life that's about to come into the world. I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know how to love. I didn't know how to take care of another life that I got created in my stomach. I didn't know that feeling. I was only 19 at the time. I didn't know what to do. I was in school. And then when I had Naya, I was lost. I was so lost I couldn't be found. I could not understand why the things I was going through in my head. Like I'll never lose my kids to the system again. And it could be your own family. Like people get these fake pages and they go up there and they post so much stuff. Like people write paragraphs to me. I get paragraphs from people. Okay? They send paragraphs to to me. Talking about my kids, talking about my house, talking about me, talking about how I'm an unfit mother. Unfit mother is a definition of my mother. Like you treated me like I was a shoe box and you put shoes inside of it and closed it up and never thought about opening it back up. I forgive her though. Because I will never drag her name in the streets. I want us to come together. I want us to be together until I die. Don't wait till I come up and then want to come around. Because as soon as you come up, family come around. When you ain't got shit and you need a shit, family ain't there. But I guarantee you, you come up and you got money and everybody know you rich and you coming up, they're going to come. Oh, I, I love you. I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry about that. That's that fake shit. One thing about it all, real recognize real. A motherfucker will only tell you what you want to hear. Let me say one more thing before I get up this documentary part seven. The ring. The ring. I can't take a ring from no man until I know if there's trust, loyalty, faith, love, and support. And you willing to take care of me and my goddamn kids. I ain't putting no ring on my finger from no man. Until I feel like it's necessary that I grow with you to know who you are inside and out. Because I will never let a man beat me like they beat like my stepdad once.